Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I can't fit Toothless in the video, so we're just going to jump right into this. Um, this is going to be hard to see. Toothless is all black or dark gray, but I haven't seen the movie. I just went by a picture. I was asked to make one, so I made one. And he turned out um, not so bad, so I thought I would do a video. Um, so anyway, I did him in black. I used my 5mm or 8 hook. We're going to make the legs first. So we're going to make all four legs. And then we're going to build what I call a body bridge. And that's just easy peasy. That's just some chains and some single crochets. And then we're going to sew the legs to the body bridge. That's how we're going to start. Because I wanted his legs. I didn't want his legs sewn to the body. The only thing I sew to the body is the head to the neck, unfortunately. And that's because um, his head is so big and wide. I had to make it separate. I tried... Uh, five times actually to do a head attached to the body and I just couldn't get the right shape or feel and so that's the only thing we're sewing to the body everything else is going to be all crocheted together so let's just jump right into this we're going to start with legs I'm going to do the first one with you and then I'll put the pattern on the screen and you can do your other three this is going to be a long video welcome to part one all right so let's start by making a magic ring And we're going to put six single crochets inside this magic ring. By the way, I'm using a four weight worsted. Um, it's a little on the chunky side. It's red heart, but it does call for a 5.5. .5. But we're doing this amigurumi style, so... We're going to do this in a five and you're going to need a stitch marker. So we jump right into, um, we don't slip stitch and we don't chain two for amigurumi. We jump right into making our next round. So um, you're going to put two single crochets in each stitch. This is the first stitch. And that's where your marker goes, is in the first stitch, not the second. So two single crochets in each stitch. So you're going to have 12 when you're done. I don't often do things in black because it's so hard to see. However, I don't have a choice. Toothless is a black animal and I thought it would be a good video. So your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. That's your one single crochet with your marker. So your next stitch gets the increase which is two single crochets in the same space and repeat. So this is where we start putting in our pop stitches. So they're also called a uh, puff stitch and probably another, there's like three different names for this stitch. First of all, put your one single crochet in here with your marker. So this is to signify claws. So this next stitch, we're going to put in my rendition of the puff stitch, which is going to be three double crochets in the same space. So do that first, and then I'll walk you through the rest. So three double crochets in the same space. Then you're going to pull up your loop. You're going to go over here to the third stitch. So that's the first one that you made. And you're going to go into it. 
you're going to put the loop back on your hook like this then you're going to grab your yarn and you're going to pull through all of it then you're going to do one more to secure it that's puff stitch so that's your first one so in this next stitch which is difficult to get into because of the puff you just need to push that out of the way you're going to put another stitch so pull that down so it's behind this so that's one single crochet now this next one's going to be another puff stitch so three double crochets in the same space Pull up the loop, take that out, go into your first stitch, put that loop back on your hook, yarn over, keep it all loosey-goosey, and pull through all of it, and then chain one to secure it. And then we're going to put another single crochet in the next stitch, pull down, make sure everything's all getting tucked in behind, because we need to use these stitches after. So that's one single crochet. Now your next one's going to be another puff stitch and your last puff stitch. So three double crochets. Pull up your loop. Go into the first stitch you made. Put the loop back on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all of it and secure it. Now you should have 12 single crochets back to your marker. So that's the start of your clawed foot. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch. Now you're going to make sure you get 18 stitches here. Um, it's difficult, especially with the black, to see which ones are stitches and which ones... There's, there's one in this grouping that's not a stitch. It's just you pulling across, and it's this one right there. That is not a stitch, so you got to go into this stitch. You need 18 stitches. I get under the whole stitch. It's so hard to see, even for me. I turn my light up on my camera as high as I can. Well, not as high as I can, because then everything would be white. So you need 18 stitches. And that's 18 stitches. So, you're going to continue with this. If you have a roll counter, it will come in handy. Um, I need 18 stitches all together with this one single crochet. I just did this first one with you. So you have 17 rows to go. So if you have a row counter, it will certainly come in handy. So you should have 18 stitches for 18, well, 17 rows now. We just did the one. And I will see you on the other side. All right, so I am done my leg. Um, so you're gonna fasten off every single one of these. Every single one of these um, 
you just need a tiny little sewing tail to sew it to a bot to the body bridge so we're going to be building a body bridge and then we're going to sew all the legs to it and then we're going to use which we're not going to fasten off from the body bridge so we'll use that yarn um, to continue around so these just need to be fastened off with a tiny little sewing tail to sew to the body bridge that's it so go ahead and um, make all four of your guys get them stuffed with a little sewing tail and then I'll meet you back here I'll put my pattern up on the screen I'll see you back here and we'll get them all sewn to the body bridge well we'll make the body bridge we haven't even made it yet so I'll see you on the other side So the body bridge is fairly fast and easy, not that it makes a difference, because you're kind of already committed. So you just need to make a slip knot. You need to chain 21. It's 21. So we're just using single crochets. We have 21 chains, which means we have 20 working stitches because the 21st one is on my hook. You're going to do 20 single crochets all the way back to where you started. That's 20. I'm just going to tighten my slip knot. So I know it tends to curl. So you're going to chain one, and for the next five rows, you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to do 20 single crochets, chain one, and turn for the next five rows. And uh, I will see you on the other side. So this is my body bridge. This is my six rows all together. Um, the first one, the chain, and 20 single crochets we, that we did, and then the five rows that I left you to do. So you should have six all together. We are not fastening off, but we are chaining one, and then pull up your loop. Uh, I don't want anything to happen to this loop, so I'm going to take a stitch marker, and I'm going to put the loop into it. That way nothing is going to happen it's not going to come undone in the meantime we need first of all to hide this end oh, I mean not hide it but you know tuck it away we don't need to worry about that so I'm just going to weave back and forth up here We need to sew our legs to the body bridge. So I need you to turn it over right side up. So this, this here isn't going to get twisted. So I didn't do this with my unicorn pegasus, but when we start to sew or crochet, we, we need it to not twist this stitch. So that's why we're going to flip it over. So I didn't do that with my other one, but we're going to do it with this dragon. So 
figure out where you're back in the front. I guess it doesn't matter. They're all the same size legs. Anyway, um, this is how we're going to sew them on. Like this. So the outside to this. Not, not like this. Because I need to be able to crochet around the leg and then down the body bridge and around the other leg. So this is on the wrong side. So I'm going to sew it to this guy. So you need to make sure that it is at the back and the front. So you're going to use just a few stitches. You don't need to use a whole lot. I'm going to use three. I think I used four for my other one, but I don't know if that's necessary really. I think three is fine. So that's what it's going to look like. I know it's hard to see. So I just used three stitches. So I'm just going to go in and make a knot just to secure that last stitch. And then you can just tuck this down in here. So that's what you're going to do with all of them. So I'm going to take my other one and I'm going to I'm going to have to move this because I need it sewn on over here. So I'm actually just going to come across because if I use my stitches I make sure you're getting right into the end like you did with the other side. If I use my stitches and just kind of go over, I'm not, I'm going to struggle to get into these when I'm crocheting. So I'm just going to go across and I'm really not going to pull. And you know what, honestly, you don't even need to pull tight because this is just um, to hold it in place. This isn't actual sewing. It's just helping hold it there while I do my crocheting. It's going to be all crocheted together. So that's how I got around that. So go ahead and sew all yours on. And I will meet you on the other side. Just like that. So I'm still only using three stitches. I thought I'd come back and show you because this is where my loop is that I'm going to be crocheting with. So I start with a third stitch back and then I just move forward. So I'm doing the exact same thing I did with all my other ones, just backwards. And this does not impede my loop that I'm going to crochet with. So I just wanted to show you that. And then I'm just going to stick this in there. So I've got all mine done. So this is what it should look like at this point. So we're going to go back to our loops. So hopefully you've done the same thing as me. And our, you know what? Our numbers will probably change anyway. Um, every time I do something like this, our numbers never stay the same. I don't know why. You'd think it would, but they don't ever stay the same. So now that we've got this together, this is the, the easy peasy part. I'll do the first row with you. Um, the first time I made this guy I had 107 stitches, but I've got to create stitches here. So I don't know what you're going to do as far as creating stitches. But, um, we're just going to go one single crochet in each stitch around. So you got to create stitches here. So just stick it in wherever you can stick it in. That's five. Actually, I might be able to get a sixth one in there. That's six across. And now I'm going to dip into my leg. So the stitch right next to the one where you sewed, that's where you're going to go in. And then around the leg.
that's 23 and then I'm back over to my body bridge oh I hate when the stuffing gets stuck especially with black let's just pull all this out here so that was 23 stitches you know what I tried so desperately to get my feet straight but I still don't think they're straight enough it's, it's not easy so I'm gonna go in next to where I sewed in my body bridge Make sure you're pulling everything tight. So that's my 24th stitch, if that helps. That's 38, and I'm at my other one, so I'm going to use the stitch right next to where I sewed. It makes 39, and around the leg. That's 54 till I get to where I gotta create stitches now. I'm at the back. So I gotta try to create six like I did the front. And that's 60, so that would be six stitches. And then I go into the stitch where I, beside where I sewed. 61. Now, where we came across here, you gotta try to bypass that. This is my 76th stitch, and then I go back to the body bridge. That's 91. I'm at my other leg almost. It is so awkward. 92. 93. Now I'm at my leg. 94. So this is my 107th stitch, so I got more this time, 107, so I can fit one more in here for 108, and then another one here for 109. So 109, I had 107 last time, so like I say, it changes every single time. So now that we've gone around once, you get an idea how your legs are going to be. This one's turned out a bit more than I wanted it to be, but I tried to keep my legs straight. 
but it's not an easy thing to do. And they may even straighten out too after I get stuffing and everything in there and I build this up. So from here, I've done the first row with you. Um, I need you to do seven more rows and I will see you on the other side. So this is my eight rows. You've got quite a body going on here. This is what it should look like. Like that. So, um, we can't stuff this yet. And since my numbers don't match my first dragon, I'm going to show you. So this is going to be the front, okay? So let's say this is the back. Let me get my legs right. So we're going to mark off where we're going to put. So you need two more stitch markers, preferably a different color than what you're using. So for this next round, you're going to be doing a two single crochet decrease. We want to just do at least the middle from leg to leg. So you just kind of have to go two single crochet decrease, two single crochet decrease. So you're using four stitches, two single crochet decrease, two single crochet decrease. So that puts me here. And I started where? Here. So that's not even. So you got to just make sure that you're finding a spot that's even. So what I did originally is I went about halfway through this leg. I'm going to mark that stitch. That's going to be my first stitch. So that's two single crochets and then a decrease. Two single crochets and a decrease. Two single crochets and a decrease. Two single crochets and a decrease. And that puts me halfway. Oops. Halfway up this leg. So that is how I marked off where I need to decrease. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 stitches that you're going to need for decrease. So make sure it's fairly even at the back or his bum's going to be really weird. So go ahead and do that and I will see you back and we'll do our start with our decreases. Okay, so now that you've got your markers in. Um, how did I get stuck to that? Oh, look it, I missed a stitch. Let me just finish what I was doing up here. All right. So we are going to single crochet around to your first butt marker. There's my second butt marker is over here. So we're mainly going to be using this one. This is just more of a guideline as to where you are in between. But if you need to put a, I mean, you'll probably have to put a decrease under this marker. So you don't need to keep this one in. This is more the guideline as to where we're going to start decreasing. So. I didn't actually keep this one in when I was designing. I actually took it out. I just wanted to use it to find the middle. So if you wanted to do that, I know it's really, really bright and hard to see because I've got, because I'm using black, I got my ISOs up really high. So you're going to single crochet all the way around to your first marker on his bun. The number that I had initially was 48 stitches, if that helps. That was 50 for me because I was two stitches higher than I was on my first dragon. So now that we're at our first butt marker, we're going to start decreasing and we're going to use under the marker for our first stitch. So we're going to do two single crochet decrease four times. That's 
That's number one, and you need to put the marker back. This one we can take out and forget about. This one we need to put back. So that's one, and that's two single crochets, and then your decrease. And again, two single crochets and a decrease. And again, for the third time, two single crochets and a decrease. Let's take this guy out and get rid of him. One more time, two single crochets and a decrease. And now, you can single crochet all the way back around to your main marker. So then I'm going to refer to this as your butt marker and your main marker. So now it's just straight up single crochets, one in each stitch. So I had 42 stitches back to my marker, and my original uh, dragon, I had 43 stitches back to my marker. So if you're off by one or two, it's no big deal. It's still going to look like a dragon. You don't have to worry so much about your numbers when it comes to, to crocheting legs and stuff on. Um, I did lie to you earlier. I said the only thing we sewed on was the head, and that's not true. Um, we also sewed the tail on. I did initially, when I was designing this, did it with crocheting the tail on but it's such a weird tail um, that it's big at here and then it gets really thin so it just made the butt look so ginormous like a big bump was there so I decided I was just gonna sew it on because um, it looked horrible so your next row is gonna be pretty easy the whole entire thing is gonna be two single crochet decrease Depending on what your number is, don't be too upset if you come back around to your main marker and you can't finish your sequence. It's not a huge deal, again. Um, but we're not just doing the butt this time, we're doing the whole entire thing. Because I do need to decrease the whole animal and the chest as well. So that's why I decided to do that. So that's number one, and that's number two. And then your decrease. So I had originally wrote down that I did this 27 times, but I mean, just do two single crochet decrease around your whole dragon. So I made it all the way back to my marker. Um, and I did my full sequence. Um, so your next round, and I have 78 stitches marked down, but who knows what you have, um, or even what I have. Um, it's just one single crochet in each stitch. So easy peasy. Easy peasy round. I had to raise my camera because this thing gets pretty big. So I've done my one single crochet around. I have 80 stitches, not 78, so I'm still two ahead of where I was in my last dragon. So um, this we're going to decrease again on the bum. So I want you to single crochet all the way the way around to your butt marker. So I'm back to my butt marker. You're going to do one single crochet decrease four times. That's number one. 
and your decrease. That's one time. One single crochet decrease. Two times. One single crochet decrease. Three times. One more. One single crochet decrease four times and then you can single crochet back to your main marker. So this next round is going to be single crochet all the way around to your butt marker. You're going to decrease three times and then you're going to single crochet back up and around. I'm going to put all this on my screen so you can follow it. But let's baby steps, single crochet all the way around to your butt marker. So I'm just coming around to my butt marker. So this decrease is going to be one single crochet decrease three times. Last time we did it four times. That's number one. And now you can single crochet. 27 or whatever you have back to your marker. I know you desperately want to stuff this <laughs> But I would advise against it. It's very difficult to work with But it's going to be a hell of a time stuffing it after but Completely up to you So this is what you should have you should notice it skinnier here than here Which is exactly what you want so your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch around. Um, my numbers were 71 stitches, but I probably have 73 uh, stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease all the way around. So not just the butt, all the way, but you still need to keep your butt marker. That's number one, number two, and then a decrease. So I come back around with my sequence and I have three single crochets left. Uh, I'm just going to put, because I can't do my last sequence, so I'm just going to put three single crochets in there. It's no big deal. It's not going to make a difference. Um, that's actually what I did with my last one. It's exactly what I did with my last one. So your next round is going to be another decrease on the bum and I know this looks really funny and I also know that it feels really funny but trust the process. Um, I've never steered you guys wrong before. Uh, it will look like a dragon <laughs> when it's done. So I want you to do whatever you have for numbers. I want you to Single crochet around to your butt marker. We're going to do a butt decrease again. So I have 28 stitches, but. So, um, so I think our second to last decrease. So again, you're going to do one single crochet decrease. You're going to do that three times. So that's one single crochet. Then your decrease. 
one single crochet and a decrease. That's twice. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Oh, yeah, we only do it twice. I wrote down three times, but that doesn't seem it doesn't it's not right. It's two times. Um because you don't I wanted you to stay here, right? And then I had 18 back to the marker. Well, this is 20 because I'm two stitches ahead. So that's 20 back to the marker. So so do that twice and then single crochet, one in each stitch back to your marker. Sometimes I write the wrong things down when I take my notes. It's not easy to design something and then stop every time you do something and put it in your computer. But... That's what I do with all of mine. It goes into my um, iPad. And then I bring my iPad down to my craft table to do my videos. So I'm back to my marker, my main marker. And then the next round is just one single crochet in each stitch. So I have written down 51 stitches, but I probably have 53 stitches. So we're getting very, very close to finishing this part. So I know this video is long, but I warned you at the beginning that it's going to be long. The sky is ginormous. So. A uh, very dear friend of mine asked me to make him a toothless. Um, had he not asked me, I probably wouldn't have made a toothless. Um, just because he is so funny shaped, his head is funny shaped, and he's got all those horns all over his face and his and his butt fins and his tail fin and like he's he's a lot of work. So. Um, it took me a very long time to get the design down properly and I really wasn't happy with him till I showed a picture to my seven-year-old granddaughter who instantly screamed toothless she knew instantly who he was and I was like okay well as I I've never seen the movie I had to go off a picture of toothless just to design it and I thought, you know what, if she likes him so much and she, she knew who he was right away, then it can't be that bad. So I hemmed and hawed for weeks about doing this video. And then ultimately I decided I was going to do the video. Talking with that in my mouth. So here I am doing the video. <laughs> um, but it is a lot of work. And this may even be a three-parter. His head is ginormous but this body doing it this way is a lot of work but the outcome is fantastic you know like you don't need to sew the legs on you don't need to you know worry about the the appearance of sewing the legs on because really it does kind of look crappy and that's why when I did my unicorn pegasus I was not going to just sew the legs on I wanted to build them on so So that's my story about Toothless. Now I've just made this video longer by yapping at ya while I was doing my one single crochet. So your next round. is going to be another butt decrease if I can get my computer to work. So there's another butt decrease and this time it's well it's the same as last time you're going to single crochet around to your butt marker and this looks like it is the last decrease and then we'll sew it up make a neck hole make the neck and then that'll be the end of the video so single crochet around to your butt marker
<laughs> this is what my butt looks like right now. It'll look better with stuffing in it. You'll get the idea of what's going on up here. So, we're going to do one single crochet decrease two times. That's one single crochet. And then you decrease. And do it one more time. One single crochet and a decrease. So this, I'm pretty sure, is the end of our decreases. So just single crochet, back around, sorry, I just hit the camera, back around to the main marker. All right, back around to my marker. Everything looks pretty funny. For the next two rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each stitch around. Then we're going to sew up the back. So follow my screen prompts and I will see you on the other side. So I've got my two rows done. I gotta start stuffing this. Really make sure you get down into these legs and just in case put that around your loop. This is long work to get this stuffed properly. It's not just something you can just jam stuffing into. You have to shape and mold as well. Make sure these legs are stuffed pretty good, but not overstuffed that you can see the white through the black. This is why we use a hook smaller than our yarn for amigurumi. So stuff the butt first because that's, we're sewing this up to make a neck hole. So you're going to need the butt stuffed as good as you're going to stuff it. And it is not an easy process. All right. That's as funny as he's going to look. Um, I was more concerned with how much is in the butt. Not so much up here. But I did stuff him, I think, pretty good up here. So he's meant to be quite wide and chesty. And as you can see, I didn't get my feet turned properly. So... My feet are all screwed up, but hopefully yours came out better than mine did. So you need a piece of black yarn. We're going to put a slip knot on one end of it. And the other end is going to get threaded. Find another stitch marker here. So all I did was guess. <laughs> but I want to keep these, make sure these are together, because we're gonna have to sew. So I uh made sure these there was two stitches here at the back. So I'm just trying to keep it even, stitch across from stitch, so when I sew it, it doesn't get, oops, when I sew it, it doesn't get all jacked up. So I just want to make sure the stitches are across from one another. Those are. So do I got here? 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 ish. So once you find, so just do that, just use your stitch marker. We're going to sew from here to here, not the stitches my marker's in. So this is my slip knot. I'm going to go through these first two stitches. Actually, let's, uh, let's do that differently. I am not a sewer, so for me to give lessons in sewing is probably not a smart idea. I'm going to go from the underside in just because I'm going to close this um, So I'm going to go through this first stitch and I'm going to go through my um, slip knot and then I'm going to pull to make a knot so then that's just going to go sit on the inside there, down in there. So now that I'm attached, I can just come through here I'm going to start making um, My stitches. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to pick up the one over here. So go stitch, stitch across from stitch. So grab this next stitch and go through this next stitch. So it's, it's a whip stitch ultimately. So I'm going to pull just to tighten this knot down so you don't really feel it or see it. So that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to go across and across. I'm going to do a whip stitch. So after this is sewn, you can still shove some stuffing up there if you feel that you need to. So I'm on my last stitch before my marker. So I'm just going to pull this tight. I know it's really hard to show you on here. I'm going to come through the same stitch again and I'm going to make a knot. Pull that tight. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to pop up over here because to help hold down this butt thing wants to keep poking out. I'm just going to weave in and around it. Oh, if you guys know a way to get this stuff off, this polyfill off my black yarn. Please feel free to write it down below. I hate that. It's a huge pet peeve. Working with black. And it just is everywhere. So I'm just trying to weave around a butt so I can hold this bump down that just wants to be there. Once you're satisfied, I'm going to snip her off. For this, you're going to do six rows of whatever stitches you have, whether it be 18, 20, 24, the last one I did 24 because I wanted it wider, um, but that's when I thought I was building a head onto it. You can undo this too. Take that out. You're going to use these stitches down here. So we're going to do six rows. I'm actually going to leave you. I'm going to end the. Um, I'm going to end the part one here because it's been a few hours and I think we've done really good today. 
and getting this done this far so let's just uh, see how many stitches I got here Eighteen. So I'm going to go into this spot. That gives me nineteen. I'm going to go into this spot. This is where the stitch marker was. That gives me twenty. So that's actually a good size neck, I think, for the size of the dragon. I got twenty-seven. So it doesn't matter what size of neck you have, um, but you want a, a fairly big one because his head is ginormous. So, man, I wish this leg would <laughs> stay turned out. Anyway, I'm going to leave you here. Um, do your six rows. I'll put my screen up before the video ends and you can pause it there if you need to or just remember that you got to do six rows so that's what I did I did six rows and then I fastened off because we're we're making the head separate and sewing it to the neck so thanks for joining me for part one I will see you in part two and hopefully it doesn't go any more than that because I'm trying to make this video as short as I possibly can. So I will see you in the next video.